Hi everyone, this is Monica with Hashtag Goals English. If this is your first time joining me, I teach English with a focus on pronunciation and fluency. In this live lesson, I'm going to teach you some of the most famous movie quotes from Hollywood films, but here is the twist. I've only selected quotes or chosen quotes that we use in day-to-day -day life or everyday life. So these quotes are not just used to talk about the movies or reference the movies, um, but they're used in general situations. Um, so while some movie quotes are only used to talk about the movies, right, others are so common, they are now pretty much idioms that are used in natural conversation. So you don't need to watch these movies to understand these quotes, but if you can, most of them are really great movies that you should check out if you have time. So before we do our first quote, please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe so other English learners like you can find my channel and learn with us and join our community. Okay, so, and if you're joining me on Instagram Live, hello. I'm mostly focusing on my YouTube, but you can uh, ask me questions and I will try to get to them after the lesson. Um, so my first quote is from one of my favorite movies of all time, The Wizard of Oz from 1939. So this movie has a lot of famous quotes, such as, there's no place like home, and what the witch says, I'm melting, I'm melting. Um, but the quote I think that is most often used outside of talking about the film is this one. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. So that's the direct quote. But often this is misquoted and we sometimes say, we're not in Kansas anymore, or I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. So because it's used so much, it actually has changed a little bit from the original quote. Um, so in the movie, if you haven't seen it, Dorothy is, is a young girl and her dog have been, her dog Toto, have been carried away in a tornado and they've arrived in a strange and unknown land named Oz. But Dorothy doesn't know they're in Oz yet. She can see right away, however, that it is not her home, Kansas, right? So Kansas is a US state that's known for having lots of flat land and fields. So how can you use this phrase in everyday life? Well, for example, if you're driving around and you get lost, and you're clearly in a part of town that you've never been to before, or maybe you've gone to a different town or city, you might be able to say, oh, we're not in Kansas anymore. Even if you've never been to Kansas, right? It's just this phrase, kind of similar to the idiom I discussed in one of my other lessons, fish out of water, right? When you feel like a fish out of water, when you feel like you're in a place where you don't belong, you could say, oh, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. All right, and if you have any questions as we go along, I'm kind of checking the chat boxes to make sure, um, uh, see if anyone has any questions. All right, so our second quote is from, uh, an, also from an old film, from Sunset Boulevard. And this film is from 1950, is that right? Anyway, so I have to be honest, I've actually never seen this film, but I'm pretty sure I've said this line at some point in my life. So the official line, the official quote from the movie is, All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. So similar to Dorothy's line about Kansas, this is often misquoted, meaning it's said incorrectly. And the misquote I often hear is, I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille. So they just change the order a little bit. Probably because actually Robin Williams says this quote in the 1993 film, Mrs. Doubtfire. So it's kind of a double movie quote there. Um, it also is shortened for, to, I'm ready for my close up. So a close up is a shot when we're taking pictures or filming a video that is very close, right? So in the movie, the character is an actress and she says this line to her director after taking a little bit of a break from filming and then she's ready to go. So this quote is often used when someone is finished getting ready or finished putting on their makeup and they feel like they look good enough for a close up, right? So you've just primped in the mirror. Primped is a word meaning making small fixes to your hair or maybe to your makeup, 
right? So you've primped in a mirror and you might say, I'm ready for my close up, right? You feel like you look good. You can say, I'm ready for my close up. Um, and it's so funny, I just want to say, as I researched for this lesson, I realized there are so many movie quotes that I've heard over and over again without having seen the movie, right? Many of which were made decades, like years and years before I was even born. So that's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> all right, checking my questions. There we go. So the next one is a little more recent, uh, kind of. And a lot of you probably know this one, maybe not. Let me know if you know it or not, I'm curious. Um, so it's from Star Wars and it's said throughout many of the films in the series, but it was first said in the original film in 1977. And if you're a fan, you probably already guessed that the quote is, may the force be with you. May the force be with you. So if you haven't seen Star Wars. The Force is the energy that connects all life. So in the film, the Force is what helps the good guys and the bad guys, really, fight their battles. So this phrase and the films are so popular, we even have an unofficial holiday for it. May the Fourth. Get it? May the Fourth be with you. <laughs> force, Fourth, Force, Fourth. So there's a little pronunciation practice for you too, right? Force with an S and fourth with a TH. Force, fourth. So in everyday life, Star Wars fans will jokingly say this as a way to wish someone good luck when they are about to face something difficult, right? When they're about to do something difficult. So for example, when I was in high school, my pre-calculus teacher, so that's an advanced math class, my pre-calculus teacher in high school would write on the whiteboard before every test, may the force be with you. The force was not with me. <laughs> I did not do well on those pre-calculus tests. Um, <laughs> okay, moving on to our next one. This is getting more recent as we go. The next quote is from the 1996 film, Jerry Maguire. Let me know if you've seen this one. So this is um, a very famous romantic film and it has a lot of famous lines, but the one I was gonna talk about specifically was, you had me at hello. You had me at hello. So in this film, Tom Cruise's character named Jerry goes on a long confession, right, telling the woman he loves, played by Renee Zellweger, whose name is also Dorothy, he's telling her how much he loves her, how his life isn't the same without her, right? He has this whole speech, and in this speech, he has another famous quote, which is, you complete me. Oh, how romantic. Um, so at that point, Renee Zellweger's character interrupts him, like tells him to stop, and says, you had me at hello, right? So what does that mean? <laughs> that means from the moment he came in and said hello, she already wanted to be with him, right? He already had her as his woman or his partner, right? Or he already sold her on the idea. She was already convinced of whatever he was going to say. So we actually use this one a lot, but um, often in really silly situations. And we replace the word hello with something else. So, for example, I might ask my friend, hey, do you want to take a vacation next month? Maybe go to the beach or rent a nice cabin in the woods, bring the dogs, do some long walks. You know, I might be trying to convince her to go on this vacation. And she might say, you had me at vacation, right? So instead of you had me at hello, you can say, you had me at vacation, right? Um, <laughs> <clears throat> excuse me, meaning the moment I said that I wanted to take a vacation with her, she wanted to do the vacation too, and she didn't care what the vacation was, right? Um, and another famous line from this same movie, Jerry Maguire, is said by Cuba Gooding Jr.'s character, I believe, and it's, show me the money, right? So people say this one a lot too, show me the money. <laughs> and um, all right, so the last one is from Lord, The Lord of the Rings. And this one, you need, you need to do a voice with this one. Um, 
I am not very good at this voice. It's it's uh it's a character that was played by a man. Um, but I'll, I'll try. I'll try. There he goes. My precious, something like that. My precious are the words. <laughs> so um, in the film, this character Gollum is like this kind of scary looking creature, and he is obsessed with the ring that the the whole movie series or book series is about. Um, and he pets the ring and he calls it my precious with this kind of raspy like <sighs> voice. Um, so if you haven't seen the film or if you haven't seen it in English, I'm actually kind of curious what, what this character's voice sounds like in other languages. But in English, it's this very particular voice. Um, guys most often do better imitations of it because it's a little more manly voice, but I've seen women do really good impersonations of Gollum too. Um, but you can find clips of the character. I, I, I suggest it if you haven't seen it because it's pretty iconic. So anyway, we jokingly use this phrase and the voice when we are like very, very obsessed with something. Often like, often something small and seemingly insignificant. So for example, I might get myself a bowl of pasta, right, spaghetti, and then grab my Parmesan cheese because I need Parmesan cheese for my pasta. I love it. I must have it. My precious. I can't do it. I wish I could do this voice. Like, uh, so I wish somebody could help me out here, but I, I can't do it. But my precious, my precious, right? <laughs> So that's all I have for today. I'm making this one a short one. So if there are some movie quotes that you use in your everyday life, um, if you have any favorites, leave them in the comment below. If you like this topic, I might do it again in the future. So let me know that as well, because there's so, so, so many movie quotes. Like we, uh, in English, like in America, I, we love to use movie references. We love to imitate people in movies. We love to use quotes from movies. So I'm sure there are so, so many. Um, so as always, I'm open to topic suggestions. Leave questions if you have them. If you haven't yet, you could check out my website, goalsenglish.com to find more English lessons and information. Um, if you wanna take one-on-one -on -one lessons with me, they are available via Skype. Um, as always, please like, comment, subscribe, and share so other students like you can find my videos. Until next time, keep practicing.